Hey everybody, welcome to my top five Helix Podgo HX Stomp stock cab. I did a video a little while ago showcasing my five top Helix models, amp models, and a lot of people really enjoyed it. I got a lot of great comments on it, but it got me thinking that a complimentary video to that should really be one about what cabs I'm going to pair up with different amp models. Um, now, obviously, there's so many possibilities and so many combinations when we get into this. We can pair any, you know, cab or IR with any other amp model, and the, the, the differences can be quite dramatic. Uh, and that's what gives us so many possibilities in this world of modeling, right? We can, we can, without even tweaking the tones, just by swapping in different stock cabs or IRs, we can get dramatically different sounds. And in fact, I'm of the belief that it's probably one of the most important parts of the tone, what the cab section is doing and the microphone that's chosen and the distance of it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's basically like a very dramatic EQing of the tone, right? So I thought, you know, it made me think that a lot of times I end up gravitating again towards certain stock cabs. And anybody who watches my videos knows I'm not huge on getting third-party IRs. I'm never going to say that any of them are no good. It's not, nothing like that. There's some amazing IRs out there. I just find, and as I've said before, for my workflow, staying within the Helix for sharing presets, uh, for selling presets, for uh, just ease of workflow overall, I find the stock cabs work exceptionally well. And I, anytime I've tried ours, I've never really found I've gained anything at all. And I've tried a lot of them. Um, so I thought it would be kind of neat if I go through the stock cabs that I tend to gravitate more towards. And this is my top five. And I've kind of picked five that give me uh, almost everything I need um, to, you know, regardless of the situation, whether I'm playing anything from heavy rock to, to country to blues to jazz, I can kind of get everything I need out of these five stock cabs. And these are just starting points, right? Uh, after that, there's any, any number of amounts of processing you can add to it. EQs, as, as so many folks know, I use high and low shelf EQs a lot some compression, uh, high and low pass filters, uh, high and low cuts, uh, otherwise known as. Um, you know, we can really shape the sound with that, but it's always nice to have a great starting point to allow us to shape those tones. So what I've done here is I've set up, I had to set up two presets. I couldn't get all five cabs uh, to be able to switch snapshots between them uh, in one Helix preset because of DSP limitations. Um, <clears throat> not too many times I think we're using five different cabs um, in any given preset, but what I've done is I've set them up so that I can access them pretty quick. But what I'm gonna do anyways is edit the video. I'll play them all back to back so you can hear the differences between them after I go through my top five. So without further ado, let's take a look at number five. Okay, so this is the 410 Tweed P10R, which comes, it's basically a basement, uh, Fender basement amp cabinet uh, with the Jensen P10R speakers from how I understand it. Uh, what I've done with this is if we come over to <clears throat> HX Edit here, I've picked just the Placator Dirty. I know a lot of folks are gonna say, well, can you do clean amps? Or why didn't you use clean amps? Or why didn't you use slightly broken up? Or why didn't you use distorted, right? This, I, I don't want this video to go on too, too long. So I'm picking one, but I have found these cabs that I have chosen, for the most part, end up working really nicely with clean and overdriven uh, sounds. So, I, I, you know, maybe I'll do a video in the future using cleans and trying these out again. But for this, I want to keep it a little more condensed. So I just took a Placator Dirty. With these settings, I really didn't change much. I added a little bit of drive. I think I shut the C45 off, put the fat on. I just like that sound. And with all of the cabs, I kept the setting the same. I, I kept the low cut at 80 and the high cut at 8 kilohertz simply because that's what comes up when we pull these stock cabs up. That's how you're going to get the default settings. And what I did is I put one of my favorite ribbon mics on, a 160 ribbon, and pulled it back three and a half inches. I did that to, for all of the cabs you're going to hear. So when we're comparing these, we're kind of comparing more apples to apples comparison. We're not going to really hear a difference between what the difference between two different stock cabs are if one of them has a 57 one inch back and one of them has, you know, uh, the, the um, 160 ribbon three and a half inches back. It's gonna be a very different sound. You're gonna hear the sound of the microphone just as much as uh, the sound difference in the sound of the stock cab. And I did do a video on microphones a long time ago comparing the different models. So if you wanna check that out, it's kind of interesting. 
So this is the sound of the P10, Tweed P10 Arc Hab mixed in with the Placator Dirty. Probably not a combination most folks would think of, but I wanted to add this into my list because it gives sort of that fendery quality to it, right? The low end is something special on those amp, or on those speaker cabinets, I, I, in my estimation and opinion. <laughs> It gives a really nice, interesting bite on it to the top end. And you know, maybe outside of the mix, that's not a sound that a lot of folks would gravitate towards. But I find that that works in my uh, experience in the mix. It really cuts through nice and, and has something really nice about it. Now, a lot of folks too will, will compare a stock cab to an iron and go, oh, the iron has this you know meaty bottom end and whatnot. And a lot of times I find that if we play around with our low cuts and high cuts, that can make a big difference to the sound. If I get rid of the low cut altogether, listen to the difference. <laughs> There's a bit of a thud there. So if there's something missing on the bottom, not that you necessarily have to take it all the way down, but even just lowering it to maybe 50 hertz, you know, uh, could get you back something that you, you aren't hearing that you want to hear. But like I said, for this, I just defaulted it to those settings. And again, these are starting points, right? Uh, we're going to obviously tweak this with the million other tools we have available in the studio or even live, right? And within our Helix as well. So. Cab number four is the Match G25, which is the matchless DC30 cabinet with uh, Celestian Greenback's 25 watt speakers in it. And it matches up really well with the uh, Matchstick channel one and two amps we have in the Helix, but I really like the sound of this amp model as well. And it has a very different sound than the, uh, the Tweed P10R that we had just listened to. <laughs> Something I really like about that, and remember, this is no other processing. What I have done, if you notice, I added a little touch of room reverb at the end. I always find when recording modelers, there is no room ambience because there's no microphone picking that up, right? So by adding a little bit of room verb in, it just kind of makes it sound a little more natural, and that's why I have that in there without really coloring the tone at all. <laughs> So the Match G25, one of my favorites. And number three is the Lead 8112, which is a 112 uh, matching cabinet to the Bogner Shiva amp. So this is a Bogner uh, CL80, I believe, uh, is what it's called. I'm really honestly not sure what speaker is in there. I couldn't really find anything. on The Bogner site was, uh, was down when I was about to research this and make the video. But I really find this as an interesting thing. It could be that it's actually modeling a 112 cabinet rather than a 212. So what's kind of interesting about this list so far, 
you notice, I've had a 212 cab, I've had a 410 inch cab, so a cab that's 212 inch speakers, a cab that's 410 inch speakers, and now a single 12, which is also gonna lend to the difference in tonal qualities between these, right? So again here, I have this set, it's the 112 Lead 80 with the 160 ribbon three and a half inches back, and it sounds like this. <laughs> So that's a real favorite of mine. It has a very unique mid-range to it that I find is very different than the other ones. But in certain cases in mixes, that just works beautifully right out of the box. So that's my number three. Number two is the Interstate 212, which is actually a model of the Dr. Z Z Best Cab that I believe the modeled version in the Helix uh, contains vintage 30 speakers, so a little different than anything else that I've put on so far. I believe this is a vertically stacked cab in real life. And like I said in the uh, amp model video, I was a longtime Dr. Z user and they make a wonderful, wonderful products. And this cab is really well renowned in the real world outside of modeling as, as a really top, top uh, speaker cab. And this sounds like this. <laughs> I missed that. Uh, so that has a very different sound to it. It's a little bit thinner to my ears, but that is what I want sometimes when I'm trying to get maybe something to fit in a dense mix. So it's nice to have a speaker cabinet like that. And if I roll the volume back. Somebody found it too thin, they could roll the, tra the, the uh, tone control back. There. Recently did a video about the use of volume and tone controls, which I was really happy with. I got a lot of good feedback from that too. So the Interstate 212 is my number two cab that I tend to gravitate a lot towards. And my number one cabinet, and this probably won't come to uh, as a huge surprise to a lot of folks who watch my channel, is the Greenback 25, which is a Marshall Basket Weave uh, 412 cabinet with, again, I believe Greenback 12 uh, inch uh, 25 watt speaker. So you might say kind of similar to the matchless cabinet, but they actually have a bit of a different sound, uh, probably lending to the fact that one was modeled after a 212, one was modeled after a 412, different construction and whatnot. But this is really one of my favorites, especially for rock tones, although it sounds just as good, I find on clean tones as well. Uh, so this, this I, I would have to say I gravitate towards more often than not, and I find it just gives a great starting point uh, for, for whatever tone I'm looking for. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that's the Greenback 25. So let's take a listen to all of these kind of for a little snippet. I'll edit them back to back so you can kind of hear what they sound like. think quite a dramatic difference when you hear them side by side when we go you know take a break from hearing one play another one our ears kind of quickly you know our, our audible memory uh, is, is not that great usually so once we haven't heard one sound in a while we, we try to compare it to another we've kind of forgotten what we heard before it for comparison purposes but hearing them side to side you really get to hear the difference in tonal qualities and see why uh, having you know four or five of these that we kind of know what they do uh, and we're very familiar with beforehand can really speed up our workflow when we're recording or dialing in tones because we can kind of just learn the qualities in advance to each one and, and maybe know for a particular situation that this you know stock cab or this stock cab may work better for that particular situation. And also there's so many possibilities to tweak these, right? We have the low and high cuts. We have the different microphones, which are dramatic. And I, I encourage anybody to go take a look at the microphone comparison video I did a long time ago. It's a real eye opener to how much we can shape the sound using that. And then also the distance control. It's amazing what we can do by pulling that microphone back, you know, with a ribbon, which seems really dark and muddy. We pull it back a few inches and all of a sudden it just sits better, you know? So there's all those amazing tools. And I think that's why I keep gravitating more towards the stock calves. I just can really quick with a workflow tweak things um, just from my understanding of, of recording, you know, real guitar amps with these, a lot of these same microphones and same sort of idea of moving them back and moving them around on the speaker and whatnot. And then throw in the high and low shelf EQ and I can almost do anything I need very quickly. So some pretty interesting tools. Uh, keep in mind that all of the comparisons you heard, there was nothing else added to any of this. It was the same reverb, same settings on the amp for each one. So what you were hearing was strictly just the difference between the different cabinet. So I hope that was interesting and I hope you guys found that helped you to kind of maybe dive into some new stock cabs or just maybe explore the stock cabs as they really do give us as far as I, in my opinion for whatever that's worth they really do give us you know everything we need for 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 my uses anyways and others may disagree and that's perfectly fine everybody can can do whatever they want and that's the beauty of the helix too we have that ability to load third-party irs which you know as i said before there are a lot of great ones out there so we all have our choices we can do with those and i just thought that would be a fun little comparison video and let you know what i usually gravitate towards for the stock caps thank you guys so much for tuning in i really do appreciate it please like the video share it if you don't mind subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit the little bell notification to get notified when i put new videos out and i'll be back soon with some more content thank you guys so much again for your time and for your support and i will talk to you very soon ciao for now